I'm here to talk and listen to Sandy Nairn about portraiture, about what it really means to look at somebody, what it means to take a photograph or make a painting of them, to try and really see them. The exhibition is of portraits taken of some of the actors working in a film I made called Rage, which itself is a sequence of portraits. The film consists entirely of these individuals talking quite intimately and the photographs are images taken using a cell phone just at the end of each film sequence so they're still in their performing mode. The whole question of what is real and what they're producing as a character comes up straight away but with that it brings all kinds of questions about how we understand any of us and who we are and how we see ourselves and how other people see us. I was really interested in putting at the very centre of a film a kind of tender and respectful scrutiny of the face and putting then at the centre of that apparently simple form relationship with an unseen other so that every individual in the film is talking to, relating to, being affected by and affecting somebody we never hear and never see, so that cumulatively it becomes a portrait of an invisible, unheard child. It is incredibly intense. There's no question of what Sally's describing, mm. that, that because there's no other background, we are really focused in on these individuals. It was me holding a camera, a sound recordist with a boom who was mixing, and the actor. We were the triangle. And nothing, um, so to speak, done for aesthetic reasons, although there was an aesthetic instinct at work, but rather as a consequence of a dynamic and really searching for the face. The, the guiding principle working with the actors was um, no acting, truth-telling and embodiment. They were quaking in their boots, including, you know, the grand, the grand actors like Judy Dench and Jude Law and so on. They knew that they were going to be totally exposed. Most people assume that in a story and in a work of fiction, what an actor is doing is becoming a character. But a good film actor doesn't become a character. They enter into a state of being in which they embody certain qualities of experience and so on that, that the character as written might also have had. It's not about trying to show stuff or being somebody else or entering into a role. It's entering into their own skin and their own experience and in a way bringing that experience out to the surface without effort in such a way that you feel what you're watching is real because it brings truth with it. Knowing that I was coming to talk with you this evening, I went to the National Portrait Gallery twice in the last week. The first time I went, I wanted to re-familiarise myself with it and take myself back to the memories that I had as a teenager when I used to go to the National Portrait Gallery at least once a week. I adored it. It was my favourite gallery of all the great institutions. It was fascinating for me to go this week and walk around in that same state of wonder and realize that I, without realizing it at the time, I was training myself precisely for this kind of work, but also for, for the act of looking at the face. I then decided to go back again and do have a closer look, in particular, at paintings of two actors who I happen to have worked with, Fiona Shaw and Judy Dench. So I stared and stared and stared at these paintings trying to decode them. And the only part of Fiona's quality that I really recognised was in that look up. I really recognised that in her face. And I could see that her wearing a white bra was a kind of statement, a rather shabby looking white bra, was a kind of statement about a lack of vanity that is exactly Fiona, that lack of vanity. But a lot of the rest of the painting was about painting, somebody painting flesh not really about Fiona. We know this, that any portrait is a performance. I mean, there's, there's, there's a performative element. In a portrait, it's heightened. Of course it's heightened. Yeah. Whether it's with the artist in a, sitting in a studio where it's extremely heightened, mm. 
or obviously under the camera where it is fairly heightened. Yeah. But Judy Dench is Judy in what's actually been referred to as the bus stop portrait because it was the artist uh, Alessandro Rajo and he later in the studio reconstructed what he remembered as that first moment of seeing mm. her. So she's standing there in a coat, mm. very informally dressed, and it's how he remembered mm. her mm. standing in the main hall, which mm. he then recreated in the studio. Um, and so I think it, has, it does have a sort of another layer of play about her perhaps succumbing to his recreation of her. It's, it's his memory. It's his memory. The painting it's his is about idea. his memory. Absolutely. Yeah, it's interesting. I think maybe part of what was so moving for me this uh, last week, looking at going around the gallery, was in a way the accumulative endeavour. Not any one individual portrait, but the fact that repeatedly people have tried to paint through, well, mostly through paint, uh, painting and photographs, to, so to speak, see into the soul of another. Accumulatively, the idea that people are worth looking at, worth studying, that the, the, the attempt is there to truly see, is incredibly moving.